when I make a new analytical piece, when I go into a show, I never, never have a checklist. I never have something that I'm looking for or I never know what I want out of a show. I never sit here and go, well, if it doesn't have this, then I guess the show's screwed. I never sit here and go, well, if, if the premise isn't this, you know, it's it's not it's not going to be good or if the characters aren't a certain way, it's not going to be good. Because in reality, every single show, every anime, every cartoon, whatever, they're all different. They all have different intents. They all have different things they're setting out to do. And uh, without actually seeing it, you don't know what it's going to do. So it's best to come in with absolutely zero expectations and zero checklist. Because all a checklist does is bog down the experience. You sit here and say, well, if it doesn't have mechs, then I guess it's screwed. No, no, because if it didn't have mechs, but it had very relatable characters, or the aesthetic was a certain way that made you feel an emotion, you know, um, it could be a great show. And uh, I, I think by making a checklist or by saying, well, I like this in anime, so obviously, because I like this in anime... I should limit myself to just this. It's pretty gay, and I hate it. Um, I know, just by being self-aware, that there are certain things in anime that I really like. But, um, do I hold every show to having those things? Absolutely not. I never hold the same shows to the same standards because in reality I watch every show there is no genre in anime that I do not watch um I watch every genre I watch you know um every show that I can get my hands on pretty much because I never know if there's something about that show that even though its flaws are there um there are certain elements that could make the show better or save the show. You know, a show like School Days might have a lot of flaws, but there are certain things about it that make it loved within the uh, fandom that School Days has, you know. Um, so I think with, with anime, I never come in with any kind of uh, expectation. Like, like I said in my Stella no Maho video... You know, there were certain shows that I thought I wanted, that I thought I knew um, there was something in there. Like, I, I knew I would appreciate Mob Psycho 100's beautiful animation. I knew that I would appreciate Erased for, you know, its mature storyline and, you know, weird stuff going on. But um, never did I think... I would like Stella no Maho until I had watched it, you know? And um, I didn't hold it to the checklist of having the things that those two other shows had because, you know, I wasn't sitting there thinking that, you know, absolutely everything should, should be the same pretty much. I, I guess what I'm saying is have eclecticism, you know, be able to try different things because... Every person who tries to make a piece of art or an anime is always going to be different, and the work that they produce is going to be reflective of who they are and where they work. So, in all honesty, how, how is it logical to hold every show to the same standard when every show is inevitably going to be different, you know? So... You know, I don't try to say, well, if it doesn't have this, it's not going to be good. Because you don't know till you try it. You never know till you try it. Mm. Mm. So, um, yeah, I, I don't come in with a checklist. I don't even really come in with... Here's the thing, I don't... I know certain things that I like in shows, but I don't come in with those... Oh, with those things, you know, um, you know, I may like certain aspects of Fist of the North Star and similar shows like it, but 
I tend to enjoy shows more for their individuality than just general qualities. Um, you know, there are certain feelings I like to get, but the individuality aspect of it is the thing, it, one of the things I look for most, and one of the things that I cherish a lot. Uh, all throughout my time of watching television, I've always been able to spot what made that show different from the pack, because um, I've always spent a lot of time with certain shows that I've just kind of trained myself to understand the the um, differences that divide them and not kind of generalize them. Well, you know, this is a thriller with the standard genre thriller elements. No, screw that. Screw that. I'm not going to talk about some standard genre uh, thing element or, or how this is a deconstruction of the genre. I hate, absolutely hate, when I write about generalizations like that. I think it's gay and it sucks but when other people write about it it can be interesting like there was this video called uh, Madoka Magica isn't a deconstruction and the reason that video was interesting was because it was a female perspective talking about a show that had a largely male fan base and uh, magical girl shows are normally for girls anyway so it was interesting to hear that and uh, I could I could care less about the element of it not being a deconstruction. I mean, I, I, the weird thing is that I kind of felt like everyone knew that, but I guess I'm just an idiot because that I knew that. I don't know. Um, but what I thought was interesting was specifically her argument for it, what made her video individual. And I think that's what what's special about me is I, I do look for that individuality. I don't tend to look for these generalizations. Well, if it doesn't have cell animation or, you know, if the characters aren't a certain way, it doesn't bother me, you know. Um, if there's like a CGI show or whatever, and, uh, you know, I've said like, oh, I don't like the CGI in this show. I might like the CGI in that show, so I got to give it a try anyway or something else. You know, might lift it up for me, of course. In general, as a rule, as as a rule without explaining too much, I think it's good just to, to give everything a try because you never know what you'll like. And you shouldn't have an opinion about something before you try it. That's completely gay, and I hate it. 